Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scrubs Garage. Uh, excited to have you with me today. Um, excited to bring you a project I've been wanting to do actually since I did my first track day with my Corvette, uh, which is an engine oil uh, cooler uh, setup. So the issue I've run into, I've done a couple of track dates with the car so far. Uh, both have been in cooler weather. One was in November, one was in March. Uh, but in both cases, I was running uh, fairly high engine oil uh, temperatures about 275 degrees, which is kind of the upper limit uh, for a safe range. Um, it's now late August in North Carolina. It is sweltering heat, and I have a track day in a couple of weeks. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to end up, if I don't do a cooler engine oil temperatures, I'm probably going to get it up around that 300 degree mark, uh, which is just beyond my, my comfort level. So there are a couple of solutions for doing an engine oil cooler. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the solution that I chose, there's no necessarily right or wrong uh, approach to this, but I'll share my insights of why I picked what I did, um, and then you can do some research and decide what works out best for you. <clears throat> so there are two basic approaches uh, when you want to add uh, engine cooling, engine oil cooling uh, capability. One, you can do a new radiator that has an engine oil cooler built into it. Uh, Ron Davis uh, and the DeWitts both make uh, upgraded aluminum racing radiators that have an engine oil cooler built into them. Uh, some of the benefits there, obviously you're getting an upgraded radiator while you're at it. Um, you also get the benefit of your engine uh, coolant starting to warm up the oil as the car is warming up. Obviously the oil does need to get up to normal operating temperature uh, rather quickly. If it takes 20 minutes for the engine oil to get up to temperature, that's not okay. Uh, the drawback there is you're going to be limited in total uh, engine oil cooling capacity because it is built into the radiator so um, you may not be able to pull as much heat out of the engine oil uh, as you would with a standalone system and obviously it's going to be more expensive as well instead of just buying a standalone oil cooler you're also buying a brand new radiator so typically those setups uh, run roughly $1200 uh, give or take exactly how you set yours up. Uh, the other option, which is what I've, I've chosen obviously, is a standalone engine oil cooler. <clears throat> now the challenge here, if you just add an engine oil cooler, as we talked about, uh, especially in cooler climates or if it's a street driven car, uh, is getting the oil temperature uh, up to normal operating temperature uh, in a reasonable time period. Sometimes if you just slap in an oil cooler, the engine oil won't heat up properly. So <clears throat> you can do an inline oil oil thermostat or you can do like I've done um, this block adapter from improved racing has a thermostat built into it so this is probably the heart of the system that I'm going to install like I said this came from improved racing um, part number EGM-122 so this is the 180 degree thermostat and it's uh, the block adapter as well so this will go um, you have your oil filter down here this folks to the side of the block um, your oil pressure uh, sensor goes here uh, you'll reuse that from what's already on the car uh, this one's 180 degrees the other option is 212 degrees they have two uh, part numbers that you can get so the way this works there's a, um, a valve in here that's temperature controlled much like your um, thermostat and your cooling system would be below 180 degrees the thermostat is essentially closed so 90 percent of the engine oil will bypass and not go through your cooler. Uh, the other 10% of the oil does circulate through the oil cooler, which helps that oil make sure it slowly comes up the temperature as well. Uh, prevents a thermal shock to the system. You don't want this thermostat opening, <clears throat> you know, your normal the bulk of the oil is at 180 degrees, but what's been sitting in here since you started the car, you know, is at 85 degrees. Uh, that'd be a big thermal shock. So it slowly circulates a little bit of oil through the cooler, uh, but the bulk of it uh, is being bypassed. Uh, once it gets above 180 degrees, the thermostat, the, uh, the valve in here opens and all the oil begins circulating through the cooler. So we'll talk about the cooler a little bit. So there's a couple of different sizes you can go with. You kind of got to look at what's going to fit. Um, I apologize for any background noise. Like I said, it's August in North Carolina, so we get random thunderstorms. So out of the blue, it started to rain. But I went with the Satrab uh, 625. So it's their 6 series oil cooler uh, and it's a 25 row. Uh, this is typically what the Doug Rippey kit comes with. It's what they recommend for track usage. 
Uh, they recommend the 19 row if you're just doing like a street car and you're not really going to push it that hard on the track. Um, I decided to go a little bit bigger. Like I said, mine's a track car, so it does get driven on the street. And with the usage of the uh, thermostat, I don't have to worry about it cooling too much. Uh, to feed the oil, obviously we're going from the block adapter to the cooler. So I'm running uh, 10 AN braided stainless steel uh, lines that I go to and from uh, the cooler. I have some Adele clamps to help secure things as we route it along the frame rail up to the front. I have my 90 degree AN fittings. Um, these adapt uh, from, from this. There also be some that adapt uh, from this and then we can do the 90 degree to route them like you need to. The other thing I decided to do, uh, this is a silicone fire retardant uh, sleeve hose. So this has um, temperature resistance uh, properties and obviously it will uh, also help prevent any chafing. Uh, that's one of the issues with braided stainless steel lines is that if they rub on each other or if they rub on something else, um, it's fairly abrasive, so you can end up rubbing through something. Uh, and when we're talking about oil lines, it's the one thing you just simply cannot have a failure with. Um, it's too costly there. And obviously, so where this is at, I have long tube headers, there's a lot of heat in that area. So I'd want to protect the line uh, from the headers as well. Any place it may come uh, close to being in contact with the headers, obviously you want to try to keep it away. Um, but some heat insulation would be a good, good idea as well. I could have done just a few feet of this and insulated it uh, right where it gets, you know, through the header uh, section. But I went ahead and, and bought enough of this. I'm actually going to run this sleeving over the full length of my lines to and from. It's really just a few extra bucks. Um, and so I figured just for the extra uh, insulating properties, uh, it was worth another 20, 25 bucks or whatever it ended up being. So at this point, for what I've got tied up in this, spending a few extra dollars is not too big of a deal. So this is what I'm going to do. Uh, the other thing you'll have to figure out, obviously that I don't have a bracket for how I want to mount this. So I've got an idea of the type of bracket I'm going to try to fabricate, find out if that works. Um, there are a few companies that make some pre-made brackets if you're buying a, a pre-done kit. Uh, the reason I didn't buy one of the, the pre-packaged kits like the Dove Rippy um, is because I wanted the, the block adapter with the thermostat. And the Dove Rippy is just a standard block adapter, but no thermostat. So I'm going to have to fabricate my own bracket. But I got the cooler that I wanted and all my lines. So I think this is going to work out pretty well. But that's what I'm going to do. I, like I said, do some research, determine what's going to work best for you. And um, like I said, I'll probably do a second video, kind of split this up a little bit. Uh, that way you don't have to scroll through a 45-minute video to find the part that you're looking for. So uh, tune in to the next clip. Uh, and I'll dive into the installation and show you what you're up against. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, one final tip I, I will mention, um, just kind of outside of an old cooler setup. So everything I, I bought here uh, came from Improved Racing. Really nice guys. They make top quality uh, products. The, the finish and machining on uh, like their block adapter uh, is really top notch. I, I can't say enough about it. However, I will say, just something to be aware of, it's not really a fault of theirs, but um, they ship things by default, uh, signature required. You have to have an adult over 21 to sign for it when they ship things via UPS, for at least for packages that, uh, you know, I've got almost $700 worth of stuff here, which is nice. You don't want somebody taking off with your uh, new oil cooler. <clears throat> However, if you work during the week, uh, like I do, uh, nobody's at home to sign for the package and UPS absolutely will not leave it uh, without a person over 21 at this address to sign for it. Uh, and nobody can change that once it gets shipped that way. I called UPS, uh, waited on hold for half an hour, they told me no. Um, I had an improved racing call, trying to get it changed so it didn't require a signature. They couldn't get it changed. Um, so obviously UPS makes three attempts to deliver it. And if nobody's here, then it goes back to their holding warehouse uh, before it gets shipped back. Uh, to the, to the shipper. So I ended up having to drive an hour um, to the UPS shipping uh, warehouse to pick this up. So what I will say after discussing this with Improved Racing, uh, if you know you've got a big order but you will not be home um, to sign for something like this, put in the notes comment on your order not to ship it signature required uh, and they'll do that for you. Um, it's a nice safety precaution. I appreciate that they do it. 
Um, but in my case, if nobody's home during the week because you're at a, a job, it ended up being kind of a big hassle. So, but they're great guys. They, they did what they could to, uh, to make it right. Uh, they even sent me a t-shirt um, to help smooth things over. So I appreciate it. They're great guys. I look forward to in installing the products um, and I'll happily shop with them again. But that's just a tip. You know, if you're not going to be home, uh, tell them not to ship it signature required. It'll save you a little bit of hassle. So, hope that tip helps. Hey guys, uh, just want to do a final follow up. I just got back from my track day uh, literally 30 minutes ago. I just unloaded the car. So, I wanted to give you just a final update. Um, so, it's September at VIR. Um, temperatures uh, were like 95 degrees out there on the black asphalt was probably even higher probably closer to 100. Uh, oil temps uh, even no matter how hard I ran it uh, I think the highest I saw today was uh, 252 degrees out of the oil temp so uh, without a doubt hands down that oil cooler made a huge difference. Uh, very happy with that. Um, water temps 225 to 230 so that's kind of the upper threshold for that. Um, I have to keep an eye on that, but again, <clears throat> I don't foresee running in temperatures hotter than this. Uh, really, anything hotter than this, and I'm just not going to drive. Uh, it's just too miserable for the driver. Um, but overall, I'd say the uh, engine oil cooler uh, mod, two thumbs up, big success. Uh, so if you're thinking about it, jump in. Um, you've seen the solution that worked for me, and I hope it works for you too. See you soon.